all right all right come on in it is you unlimited and i am out here tonight this is going to be a pre-recorded broadcast because i do have an eight o'clock appointment so i can't stay out here long but i just wanted to come out here and say yes there is a quick word from the lord it don't take a long time it just takes his time amen we just have to be in his time amen if you don't know who i am i am evangelist javidia t white and i'm coming to you live in I'm coming to you pre-recorded. <laughs> I'm so used to being live. I'm coming to you pre-recorded from Saginaw, Michigan, where my uh, church home is Kingdom Life Ministries, and my bishop and my pastor are the amazing Bishop Alvernus L. Johnson and the incomparable Pastor and First Lady Chantel Johnson. I love them so much. I thank God for this opportunity to come out here and talk to you guys. Um, it feels a little weird because I know I'm taping, so y'all just bear with me because y'all know I'll be out there sometime, but it's all good. I'm coming to you tonight, and I want to talk to you about something that's a serious matter, and it's a matter of the heart, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it off so we can go ahead and pray and get started because, like I said, I have to be gone in a little while. It's about 7.30, so I got about a good 25 minutes to be out here with you all so I can prepare for my next meeting, but hey, I just want to talk to you all about the heart. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for your love and kindness towards us, God. I thank you, Lord God, because your word says that no man can come unto you unless you draw them. So I thank you for drawing us tonight, God. I thank you for your anointing already being in its place, God. I thank you, God, because you love us with an everlasting love, God. And I thank you, Lord God, for your word tonight, God. And I ask in the name of Jesus that your word will penetrate hearts, Lord God, that your word will heal in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that your word will set free in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that your word will set us on strength straight street, Lord God, so we can be found in your will, Lord God. We want to be found doing your will, Lord God. We want to be those written epistles read among men, Lord God. We want to be your love letter to this world, God. So touch our hearts tonight. Clean us up, Lord God. Massage the heart, Lord God. I plead the blood of Jesus tonight over the heart and the mind in the name of Jesus. And I ask, Lord, in your precious name, Lord God, that you walk with us tonight, Lord God. Every word that comes out of my mouth, Lord God, let it let it turn over fallow ground, Lord God, that your word will take root in, in, root in the hearts and it will remain to begin to bear fruit in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for your peace. And I thank you for your love and kindness. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. Well, tonight we're going to talk about the heart, y'all. We're talking about what it means to have a clean heart, a pure heart. Why is it important to have a clean heart? Why is it important to have a pure heart? The Bible says in Matthew, I mean, excuse me, not Matthew. I'm all the way in something else. The Bible says in Psalm 24, 3 and 4, who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. Look, we want to do a whole lot for God. We want to say a whole lot for God, but we can't even get to his holy hill if our, if our hands are not clean and if our heart is not pure. It's, it's basically saying that a clean heart allows us to approach God, to get into his face, to come into his presence. Our heart has to be clean. We can't even go and pray for nobody if our heart is not clean. We can't be praying for ourselves. We can't pray for our family. We can't pray for our leaders. We can't even do intercession if our heart is not clear and if our heart is not, not um, pure. We have to maintain a fellowship with God. We have to make sure that our hands, our hearts are clean and pure so that when we approach God, that we can build that relationship, that we can have that fellowship with him because he is, he's clean. He's God. He's God. He, we have to be pure. Hallelujah. Um, purity and integrity are essential for a close relationship with God. Purity and integrity. First of all, he already know. He already know where you are. He already know. The Bible says in in uh, Genesis that when Eve gave the apple to her husband and he ate it and the Lord came to talk to them later on in the cool of the garden when his voice was walking through. Now, that's powerful. We're going to talk about that on a whole nother show, the voice of God walking through the garden. OK, but let, we're just going to talk about Adam, even this apple right now. When he ate the apple. OK. And he covered himself with figs. OK. God asked him, OK, who told you you was naked? I already knew. He, he asked him, but he already knew. He already knew the answer. He already knew that Eve had gave him the apple. He already knew that he had eaten the apple. God just wants to know if we're going to be honest enough. 
if we're going to be honest enough to tell the truth, hallelujah, because he desires truth from the inward parts. That's in Psalm 51. He said, I desire, you desire truth from the inward parts. He wants everything about us to be in truth. We have to have a clean heart before we come to him. He wants to make sure because as an intercessor, when you approach the throne of God, you have to be empty. Your heart has to be clean and clear of all foolishness, all, all um, filthiness, all impurity, all, all uh, uh, lust, everything, all, all impurities. I'm talking about everything, all bad attitudes, every situation, circumstance. That's why when you go to pray, when you go to pray, I follow, hallelujah, the acts uh, formulation for prayer, which is adoration or ad admiration, confession, then thanksgiving, then supplication. That confession part, that's when we confess. The A is for adm admiration. The C is for confession. When we do that confession part, that's when we're telling God, okay, God, this is where I'm at. This is where my heart is. This is where my mind is. This is where my soul is. This is how this made me feel. And I, I, I said what I shouldn't have said. I did what I shouldn't have said. And we repent so that we can be clear before we ask for anything because we need a clear slate. We need a clean slate. We need to be put back in our, our right place. Repentance is not to, um, repentance is not to just because you're sorrowful, but repentance is an opportunity for God to put you back in the place in which you belong in him and in, in, um, in, uh, in right standing with him, you go back and you say, okay, God, before I clown, this is where I was at. Then I clowned, I lost my space. But when I repent, it gives me opportunity to get back in my place with God. So when we, when we go to God, we have to have a clean heart. We have to have a pure heart so that we can have right fellowship with him because we can't hear. He can't, the Bible says, if there's iniquity in your heart, that he will not hear you. You can't have iniquity in your heart. And we talked about last week, iniquity is, is, is sometimes just doing things with the wrong heart, with the wrong intent. You might be doing the right thing, but your motivation can be wrong. That's iniquity. When you start moving and you start doing things that are outside of the will of God or the reason why you do things are outside of the will of God, that's iniquity. And God is saying, I need you to have a clean heart. I need your hands pure. I need your heart clean. I need your hands clean. I need your heart pure so that I can hear you by because I might want to do a work through you. I might be, I might need you to go talk to somebody for me. And if your heart is not clear and your heart is not clean, you can't even convey what I want to say because it's got to be filtered through cleanness because I'm clean because he said, I'm holy. You need to be holy. Amen. That's his word. At the end of the day, we'd have to have, make sure that we are operating the same way he operates. The Bible says, and so many times, well, I won't say the Bible says this, but a lot of people say, I want to be like Jesus. 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 Well, what did Jesus do? The Bible says he ever lived to make intercession for the saints. Why could he ever live to make intercessions? Why could that be his life work? His life work could be intercession because his heart was clean. You don't, when you have, I'm going I'm to give you a, 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 a nugget right here. I'm going to give you a nugget right here and you can take it. And I promise you it'll change your life. When you have an issue or you have a problem or you find somebody somewhere you don't like them. They don't like you because it's just life. Sometimes you just don't like people. Sometimes people just don't like you. It don't have to have a reason. Some people just don't like you. Some people you just don't like. You don't know why you can't put a finger on it. Maybe it's a vibe because you know we move on vibrations and frequency. That's a whole nother show. But at the end of the day, sometimes you just don't like somebody. And at the end of the day, you got to ask the Lord because you got to have love in your heart to operate. You have to have love in your heart to be successful. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care what nobody says. Success is different for everybody on every level. And just because you see somebody with money don't mean that they're successful. Amen. So we're going to get on that another show too. We got a whole bunch of shows coming up, don't we? But at the end of the day, when you move and you're operating, the only way that you're going to truly be successful is if you move and operate in love. If you move and operate with a clean heart, when you have integrity and purity, people pick up on that. People are, people will gravitate to you. People will support you when you have a pure heart. People will support you when you have integrity. But let me get back to the nugget. When you find that there's somebody that you just don't know why, they don't, you don't know why they hate you. You don't know why you don't like them. And I know hate is a strong word, but sometimes people will just hate you just because you exist. Maybe it could be anything. It could be the way you dress. It could be the way you talk. It could be the way you wear your hair. It could be so many different things. It could be the people that you're related to, 
that you don't even know that they know that you done. It could be so many reasons. But getting down to the brass tacks, tacks of it, here's a nugget. When you find that there's someone that you are having an issue with, you don't know why, or there's somebody that's antagonizing you, you don't know why, and God is calling you to be love in love, and walk in love because God is going to be checking your response because you are the one that belongs to him. Remember that you are the one that calls him father. You are the one that says that he is your savior, that he is your God, that he is your king. He's going to be checking your response. He's not going to be asking you what they did. He wants to know how you responded. Hallelujah. And if you're not responding in love, you are outside of his will. If you're not responding in a clean heart, you are outside of his will. So I'm getting, I'm about to get to the nugget. The nugget is begin to pray for that person begin to, to pray for them ask god to show you the needs of that person so that you can pray for them and when you begin to pray for somebody earnestly in your heart when you begin to pray for that person and you earnestly begin to want the best for that person god will begin to download that person to you he will begin to download the case it could be good bad or ugly but when you begin to pray for somebody it's hard to hate somebody that you're praying for it's hard to have a problem with somebody that god has put on your heart to truly pray for it's hard to have an issue with somebody and and and, and hold on to grudges when you pray for that person when you uh are are honestly praying when you're earnestly praying for somebody it's hard if, if you got to be somebody you got to really really hate somebody to be able to, to pray for them and still have a problem with them and that's what god showed me years ago i was it, yeah, when we're talking years like over 20 some odd years ago uh just pray for that person and not and i'm not talking about that manipulation i'm not talking about that that um nice nasty stuff girl i'm gonna pray for you that's all right i'm gonna pray for you no that's not what i'm talking about you know i'm not talking about that you need prayer i'm not talking about that i'm talking about that sincerity of heart god i don't know what the problem is i don't know why we don't get along i don't know what the issue is i don't know what the barrier is i don't know what this blockage is but god i'm asking you to take it away because i know that it is you in my heart that said that i'm supposed to have love for one another lord god that i'm supposed to love my sister as myself lord god that i'm supposed to love my neighbor as myself i'm supposed to have love and kindness towards your people lord god because your word says with love and kindness have i drawn thee so god i want to be in your will god so show me lord god show me my sister lord god show me my brother lord god show me their need lord god everything that they need lord god that's in your will lord god i ask that you grant it lord god open up doors for them lord god that have been shut lord god open up open up their mind lord god to have witty inventions lord god give them understanding and wisdom of contracts lord god whatever is going on in their life lord god that you know that's causing them to have issue with me lord god i ask that you remove it in the name of jesus when you start praying for people like that when you start opening up your heart to whatever god is saying about that person it's hard so when you see them the next time you have compassion and i and i promise you i mean it, it's even all the way down to somebody taught me this a long time ago as well when you see somebody and they just have a problem with you and they just keep on having a problem with you and you don't you cannot figure out how to pray for them or you can't find it in your heart to pray for them use your imagination and see them as somebody hooked up in the ICU and they need prayer to live. When you see those tubes in there in, in your mental picture, and you see tubes and you see machines going and they're laying on that cot and they can't do things on their own. Start to pray for them. Start to pray for them to be healed. Start to pray for them to be healed in their mind and healed in their heart and healed on every hand. When you start praying for a healing for somebody, because everybody needs healing on some level. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Everybody needs healing on some level, whether it's mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, everybody needs healing on some level. So when you encounter that person or that situation that just, and there's something in between you all that just won't get clear, take it to prayer. Ask God to show you, ask God to first of all, repent for anything that you think you could have done. And then ask God to show you, God, show me where this ailment is. Show me how to pray for my sister. Show me how to pray for my brother. Show me how to pray for my boss. Show me how to pray for my husband. Show me how to pray for my children. Show me how to pray for my friend. Show me how to pray for the, the police officer. Show me how to pray for the doctor. Show me how to pray. And I'm here to tell you, because I'm telling you, 
It is the 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 clean heart, and it is the 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 pure the pure hands. It is the pure the clean heart and the pure hands that gets us the opportunity to fellowship with God. To it's the clean heart that gives us the 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 um the ability to approach God. It's the it's the um it's the pure heart that solidifies our relationship. Our our opportunity for fellowship it's a pure heart we can't you know just run around and and, and talk to anybody any kind of way and and treat people any kind of way and expect that we're gonna we're gonna get something from god because guess what he loves them too the bible says he has no respect to a person y'all hear what i'm saying mm. another one is is uh another um area that he showed me is blessed you're blessed and rewarded with life when you have a clean heart when you have a clean and pure heart you are blessed and reward and you have a blessed and rewarded life you have a blessed and rewarded life matthew 5 and 8 says blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god those who have a pure heart you can get in god's face okay when you have a pure heart you can go, you can get to the throne. Hallelujah. When you have a pure heart, hallelujah, you can have a special vision into God's presence. Your purity, the purity in heart, hallelujah, brings rewards of a deeper spiritual relationship and rewards of a deeper experience with God. You can have a deeper experience with God when you have a pure heart because you don't have, he doesn't have to filter out all of your mistakes, your bad words, your, your, your watching TV all day and, and bad conversations and, and, and lust and, and all the other things that we get entangled with throughout the day. When you have a clean heart, when you have a pure heart, you have a blessed and rewarded life. The reward is him. The reward that you is that you can get to him easily because there's nothing that he has to filter through. Amen. When you can come to him and say, you know what, God, I've been with you all day long. When it's time to, to, to get to the brass tacks of praying and it's time before you go to bed and you're about to have that prayer time with God before you to, to close your eyes, you can say, God, I've been with you all day. God, I thank you that my mind has been clean all day. I thank you that my heart has been pure all day. God, I I need your presence tonight. And then whew, that presence comes in. Why? He don't have to filter through. First, you got to repent for all the things that you said. Then you have to repent for all the things that you thought. Then you have to repent for the things that you that wanted to say, but you didn't say, but you insinuated by your actions, your facial expressions, all the way down to your facial expressions. Because sometimes you don't say it, but your whole face done told the whole story to the person across the room, even though you ain't opened up your mouth. So you did just, you did communicate your thoughts and your feelings to somebody else about somebody come on now y'all know what i'm talking about sometimes we can say a whole lot with our face we can say some of us can say a whole lot with our eyes okay trust and believe honey i used to talk with my eyes not saying a word okay and that's a whole nother show we're not gonna get on that just add that show to the list okay but i'm here to tell you it's when we have a when when you have a clean heart you can have a blessed and rewarded life the reward is that you can get to god quickly it's the reward that you don't have to to uh to um filter through a whole lot of stuff to get in god's presence and i'm gonna move quickly the last one that i have hallelujah hallelujah the last um the last let me let me let me see my last one i, I wrote it down let me get it is guidance and wisdom Proverbs 4 and 23, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. Okay. Guiding or guarding your heart ensures that your thoughts, hallelujah, that your thoughts and decisions and actions are aligned with God's will. A clean heart is crucial for receiving divine guidance and wisdom in navigating life's challenges. A clean heart, when you guard your heart, you are ensuring that your thoughts and your decisions and your actions are aligned with God's will. You are in the will of God when your heart is clean. You can make 
clear decisions. You can move and navigate navigate situations when your heart is clear. When your mind, because when you have a clear heart, clean heart, you have a clear mind. And y'all know, I always tell y'all every time we come together, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, 5 and 6 to 7 trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That's that guidance that he's talking about. This is that guidance that he's talking about. I don't know where I got some water right here. It's trying to choke me out. The devil is allowed. I only got five more minutes, but, um, I just want to get, I wanted to get these three points out to you. I didn't want to leave tonight and not have any, um, any um, meeting with you all, I just wanted to come out here and tell y'all that I love you. You are unlimited and we got to have a clean heart. The, the, the clean heart um, is crucial. It's crucial to receiving God's divine guidance that directing your path. He can tell you the steps to take. He can tell you the conversations to have. He can tell you the conversations not to have. When your heart is clean, he can talk to you because again, he doesn't have to filter through all the other voices. He doesn't have to filter through all the other thoughts. He doesn't have to filter through those things because when you begin to align your thoughts, your decisions and your actions into, into the way his will wants you to move into his will and his, into his ways. There's no stopping you then because then you become unstoppable. You become un unlimited. Like I say every week, you are unlimited. Why? Because God is guiding you because you're listening because your heart is clean. Your heart is pure. He can get a message to you. He doesn't have to holler. He doesn't have to hurt you. He doesn't have to, when I say hurt you, he doesn't have to use situations and circumstances to bring you to your knees because you have a clean heart and you have a, a, a clear, um, a clear pathway a clear channel to him a clear a clear portal to his spirit so at the end of the day when he wants to speak to you you hear him when he wants to lead you and guide you you can follow amen and i'm sorry to have to cut this short i just want us to get these three principles so that we can have operate in a clean heart so that when we move and we 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 do the things that god has called us to do we're doing them with a clean heart number one spiritual purity and fellowship with god hallelujah that you can have um, a purity and, and integrity, that those are essentials to having a close relationship with God. Number two, being blessed and having a rewarded life, that God can reward you with his presence, that his anointing shows up when you are in his presence, when, it, when you call on him, that he shows up because your hands are clean, because your mind is clean, because he doesn't have to filter through anything that we've done all week long, hallelujah, just to get to, to, to his directions, hallelujah. And last but not least, guidance and wisdom keep your heart with all diligence. That means everything you got to make sure that their heart is clear. You got to work at it, work at keeping your heart clean, work at keeping your mind clean so that when he wants to talk to you, he can lead you and guide you in your actions, your decisions, and, and your thoughts are aligned with his will so that you stay in his will. I hope you got something out of this. I know I got to go. I took a little bit more time than I should have on a couple of points, but I just wanted you to get this. You are unlimited, but you got to keep your heart clean. You got to keep your mind clean. It's all connected. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that your people heard what you had to say tonight. I'm sorry that I had to rush this, but I give your name the glory and the praise. And I believe somebody's heart's going to be changed. Somebody's heart's going to be clean. Somebody's heart's going to be purified by this word in Jesus name. And it is so. And so it is. Good night. I hope to see you next week on You Unlimited. We will have our full time next week. God bless you. Take care. Bye.